The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Yeah, Earnestly Speaking Podcast. Let's get it. I'm a giant in New York, in Miami, carry heat. So much more in store, my product can flood the street. Opinion Nation, Godfather, CEO. Puff in the late 90s, gon' see me blow. Oh, got my hustle on, no imitation of that. Army of untouchables, Opinion Nation staff. Never an off season, homie, check the numbers. Heart drop in my own right, supply and southern comfort. Earnestly speaking, my ego is well fed. Earnestly speaking, you're too feeble. No threat, see him like a hurricane, you're a mild breeze, earnestly speaking, leaving Eli a dynasty, shake! Welcome to the Nerds the Podcast, I'm your host, Ernest, and he's a coming to you on a very frigid, well, frigid's kind of awkward word, but cold Tuesday afternoon here in South Florida. Online chorus, every week we do this with the man, Kyle Nash, through the game, uh, writer, of course, at BSU Media, also using today's Dolphins Wire. Kyle, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, man? I don't hear anything about frigid. I'm about to fly up to uh, Minnesota this coming weekend uh, to take in the Vikings and Dolphins game. Oh, really? I'm not covering it. That's just that's just for fun. I had planned it uh, this trip uh, before I'd even joined the Dolphins wire. So there you go. What what's what's the in- the intrigue of this game? Why would you want, why would you fight for that game? I have not made it to that stadium yet, and uh, there's a buddy of mine I fly around with uh, once a year. We try to get a game in. Oh, okay, okay. See, that's, that's one thing I want, I want to do with my kids when I, when I get a little older. Take if, if they get into the sports the way I am, obviously, you know, hit up some stadiums that bucket list stadiums I want to go to. You know, would it be football, baseball, basketball. You know. Well, I'll tell you this: you may not have put it on your list of uh, bucket list stuff you want to go to, but for what it's worth, man, make sure you take a take a Colts game at Lucas Oil Stadium because you'll find two things: a, a pretty cool stadium in its own right, and b, probably one of the more intelligent fan bases in the nation. Whoa, Indy, okay, duly noted. Absolutely, duly but, noted. Uh, likewise. Seattle, unless you want to see how loud it is. That's really oh, yeah, Seattle novelty. definitely on, on, on like on, like top of my list. Definitely goes. Go yeah, see the Seattle. fans are dumb though, and and make sure your kids are old enough to have to talk about weed because you will smell it on the way out of the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're a bit of a progressive, well, some somewhat progressive family, somewhat, you know. Um, but we'll see. Oh, um, sure, just you know, <laughs> it, 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 use responsibly. Was, uh, that message is what needs to be purveyed. Exactly. All right, we'll get to the pros in a second. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the Heisman Trophy, Heisman Trophy uh, results. Uh, Kyle Murray won the Heisman, Oklahoma quarterback, um, over uh, over Tua Tagovailoa uh, from Alabama, as well as uh, Dwayne Haskins in Ohio State. Um, I, I guess I don't know if I've ever asked you prior to the to the voting to the ceremony on Saturday, but who did you have when Heisman and, and are you okay with the result? Anybody who picks anyone over Tua Tunga Vailoa is a raging idiot who doesn't know anything about college football, nor have they done the necessary research to know why this is a bad pick. Mm-hmm. Let me be clear. This is not me signing off on Kyler Murray being awesome, because he is, in fact, awesome. But when Kyler Murray is putting up huge numbers against the complete and total lack of defense that is that conference, that makes me feel like o- Oklahoma shouldn't even be number four in the college football playoff anyway, and then you do that by handing it to a guy who blows up SEC defenses, the premier defensive conference in the nation, on a regular basis so badly that he doesn't even make it into the damn fourth quarter of the game because he gets sad because that's how much of a blowout it is. I I don't get it. How stupid are you? I think I know what happened. and it It may have also been the same reason why I sort of flipped last week. Because I was two all the way till last week, and I'm not even sure that I'm convinced that Tua shouldn't have won it. 
because two was incredible this year. There's no doubt about that. The SEC, you know, pe- people. One of the most annoying things I hate about sports fans t- today, especially, is that, oh well, what's Tua's? Give me some Tua moments. Like what fucking moments do you need from Tua? Tua just fucking dominated and murdered your asses all year long. There's your moments. Correct. Shove it. You know what I'm saying? But I think what happened, and I think, and I'm it, it, fair or unfair, Kyle. I think what happened was the perception of Alabama being plug in any quarterback, you'll be okay, and what, and and then you see actually play out during the SEC title game where Tua gets hurt, Jill, Jill Hurts comes in the game, Alabama's trailing at this point too, Hurts comes back, they win the game. Then you compile right. that with Kyle Murray, and look, I'm with you on the big on the Big Twelve defenses suck ass, which means that Kyle Murray's <laughs> margin of error. No, which means Calamari's Ka- 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 error is virtually zero. Like, now he's required to do more than he should as a quarterback just to win games. So in a, in a lot of ways... But it's easier for him to do it because, again, he is facing those defenses regularly. No, and, and you're not wrong there. You're not wrong there at all. And I think that's what flipped it because Calamari's Ka- 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 error was zero. That, okay, gee, I'm a quarterback and I have to put up 50 points a game just to win fucking games? I mean, that's insane. You know, So and he did that. But again... Yeah, but again, he's not lighting good defenses up so badly that he has to sit the fourth quarter of most games. No, right. He is and on the field the whole time. Yeah, there's, I mean, right, there's no question that the level of competition between the two teams is, 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 is night and day. I mean, that's just put, even, with, even with Alabama's, you know, uh, questionable or oh, scheduling tactics, if you want to call that, there's still no question yeah. that Alabama has a tougher schedule throughout the year than Oklahoma's and other has. There's, there's no question about that. The Big 12 legacy of bad de- uh, defense goes far enough back that Blake Bortles won a bowl game against a Big 12 team in Baylor with RG3, right? They, they <laughs> In a yeah. shootout. You lost to Blake freaking Bortles in a shoot, shootout. You know what else you did? You made Geno Smith look good enough to get into the first round of the draft. That's how bad these defenses are. Yeah, they're pretty terrible. They're they're pretty terrible. So like I said, like I, I, I'm I'm kind of happy Colorado did win it, but if Tua won it too, I wouldn't been, I wouldn't have been mad either because I was Tua all the way probably until the last week of the season. So it is what it is, man. I mean, and and I think that's what happened. What I, what I explained to you is what is why people yeah, flipped. No, it was it's listen, it's uh, it's Alabama hate. And it's the fact he's Alabama offered. fatigue, There's yes. No middle it's, like, ground. it's like the Patriots. It's fatigue. Now, here's where I'm actually bothered, Kyle. There were literally 13 ballots, I believe, that didn't have Tua's name on it at all. Like, what are you thinking? They're not. And listen, we're back to a place. This is this is media voting. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's as bad as, uh, let's say, like what the baseball writers do with the Hall of Fame year in and year out. Yeah. But you know, I, I mean, this is this is what happens when votes are handed handed out as such, and you got people like you know, it, it, it's almost trying to describe it that a vote is almost like real estate. You know, I mean, they're not bought and sold yet, but um, you know, you got these cats who have been out of it for a while. I, I don't know enough about it, but hey, put this put, put it this way: the biases are real. Um, and uh, to be honest, if it wasn't for the fact the media was involved and that it's a media determined award, uh, I, I would be very, uh, I would not be surprised at all that Mackenzie Milton didn't make it into the top four, for example. I think that only happened because uh, because uh, it's a media driven award. And I think this is double over here. You got people who do this for a living that are tired of writing Nick, Nick, Nick Saban's name, that are tired of uh, putting the Alabama Crimson Tide in their stories, and, and you know, they're just fatigued, so to speak. Basically, they, 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 don't, they, they don't like success. Basically, they, they basically, um, so, basically they're socialists. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, that's, that's funny. I like that. No, no, um, I think what it is, is is Nick Saban, for, you know, fair or not, is not necessarily a media darling. Um, you know, I get that, but the results are the results. If he's still dominating and still murdering folks on the field, then you should treat it as such no matter what. Eat, treat each season like it's one season. Period. Do your fucking job. I agree. The same. Well, hey, I mean, you know, there's Gary Washburn who wouldn't v- vote LeBron as the MVP when literally every other writer in the country did. So, there right. you go. Right. So, there you go. All right. So, I, I, I want to get at him before we get to the NFL stuff because, uh, like I said, the press culture was over. You know, it's a little depressing, but okay. Um, 
Last night's game, Seahawks beat the Vikings 21-7. I got to ask you, Kyle. Seahawks 8-8-5 eight, eight and five now. Um, look, defensive struggle most of the game to the, to the fourth quarter. I want to ask you, and I, I think we've already teased this a couple times in the last couple weeks as we've gone on through the year, but we're now getting close to the playoffs, and this team is – look, we'll get to the playoff locks, on locks in a second, but I, I think I'm there. I told you all if they won this week, I'm there with the Seahawks. How dangerous is this team moving forward? Oh, we talked about this a lot. When you got a defense that's playing well, so long as you have Roger Camomile, it's Roger Ru- Rusty Camomile, You're Roger Wilson, um, exactly, right? <clears throat> Rusty Camomile uh, 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 Wilson in in your backfield at the helm, you have a chance. And he didn't play that great last night, but he made plays when needed to be, and that's I think that's the difference. Between Don't get me started with Rusty didn't play great and then won the game. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, he, what I'm saying is he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't typical Russell Wilson. I'm not knocking the guy. Minnesota's defense had a lot of no, I, too. I know you're not. I'm just saying whether he has a good game or not doesn't matter. Literally, why I use the words as long as he's back there. You have to, so you're telling me there's a chance. Yep. That's that's the status but at again, all times. He made the plays and he made him in, in, in the game, and it's that simple. Um, yep. You know, I said this before a couple weeks ago. Like, I think Seattle is the only team in the NFC. I look. I know Chicago's on fire. We'll talk about them in a second. Um, I still feel if you ask me in a, in a vacuum, which team can challenge the Rams, like can challenge the Saints? I'm still sticking with Seattle, man, because you know you, you say Chicago's defense is good, and yes, defense travels. But Seattle's a quarterback is a top five quarterback in the league, and that's as simple. And to me, when you have that come out with a solid defense and a good and a running game all of a sudden now in the playoffs, that travels well. And I think that if, if I'm the Rams, you don't want to see Seattle in the playoffs? Hell no. I never understood defense travels, and I'm not here to say I haven't I haven't done enough research to do one of my uh, 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 truly informed tanks to see how true yeah. that is or is it. But if defense travels, then why is home field advantage so important? Don't tell me about de- uh, defense travels when I'm there at the bounce house of Spectrum Stadium with UCF getting, you know, multiple yards of, of uh, uh, false start penalties because of the volume. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, or let's keep it in the NFL. You're going to try to tell me that Seattle's home field doesn't – you're nuts, you know. Except they won't, they won't have home field in the playoffs this year, unfortunately for them. Um, they will not, yeah. But, that, that, that's the only thing that keeps me truly uh, from thinking they'll get past round two. Yeah, exactly. Um, that being said, I, you, you, you do agree. Seattle might be able to – it's probably – of that bottom four, the next tier after after L.A. and uh, and uh, New Orleans, that they, they're the most dangerous team of the next, the next four. Well, I um... – I I feel like you never know what you're going to get with the Bears. Um, Matt Nagy has proven his coaching prowess. Coach of the year. Um, um, Coach of the year is definitely on his horizon. I mean, it's a matter, what do you like better? Do you like Russell Wilson or do you like Matt Nagy um, as far as somebody who can change a game around out of nowhere? Um, It's all a matter of, I'll put it this way, eventually you can watch enough tape and kind of figure out a coaching scheme. You can't figure out a natural decision guy like Russell uh, Russell Wilson. That's very true. That's very, very true. All right. Um, the, we, we talked about the Rams a little while ago. The Rams, tough loss in Chicago. You know, I got to be honest with you. I, I, maybe this is, just, this is just my observation of the game based on what I saw on Sunday night. They're lucky they don't have to play any, any cold weather games in the playoffs. They're lucky that they'll be home. Right. And even if they play New Orleans, they'll be in New Orleans in the Dome. You know, because – that team is night and day. There's two spectrums of that team from being in, in warmer climate and then being in free Chicago like, like they were on Sunday night. They they look stunned. And, and, I, and I mean they mean Jared Goff look stunned and look uncomfortable right. in that weather. That's a, I think that's a real thing in this situation. Well, I think that goes both ways, too. I feel like the Bears are a completely different team in the warm climate as well. <laughs> team uh, Offenses are faster when they can move better. Uh, uh, offenses are, are, are faster and, and, and more consistent when their hands aren't numb trying to catch the football, uh, especially in a league like this. So they very smart, uh, you know, if they would be smart and never in a situation like this where they're going to play a, a Rams style team or I would even put this under the Saints, um, uh, crash the box. And, and I know it's anti instinctual to have, say, have Breeze beat you, but 
um, you're more relying on the receivers to screw up, and Breeze will make his plays because he's, you know, Drew Flippin' Breeze. Yeah. But, you know, I, I say this to say, you know, I think this uh, the situation of the Bears' defense being as good as it is always makes it – uh, it makes it, a cold weather situation is always going to favor them. Not to mention the, the weather in Chicago can't ever make up its mind warm or cold year round. So That's true. they're going to be more web, weather uh, resistant, so to speak. Hey, climate change um, is real. Climate change is real. <laughs> well, I, I mean, listen, I, I don't know about your political agenda, but all I can tell you when it comes to the client, uh, climate, rather, what changes is the prowess of the defense and, and it days in. Um, it's it's a shame that the Bears don't have a legitimate quarterback to put themselves in a position to yeah. host more games. Yeah, and and that's the one thing that came with that game. It's like it was a great performance of the Chicago Bears defense. You know the weather, all that, and yet you only. I don't want to knock the Bears. I'm not knocking the Bears here, but you know you won 15 to six. You know that game. The way that 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 game was. That game should have been at least twenty four to six, or you know something like something of that nature. And I think a lot of that has to do with Trubisky's limitations. Oh, of course. And I think that could be a problem. Well, let me even add this to it. Like, that's the style of game you have to you have to have if you're coaching the Bears right now because Trubisky is what is it, what it is. It's like they, their their receiver core isn't necessarily impressive, so they're relying on stuff on the ground. Uh, Tariq Cohen and guys like that are doing good things on the ground. Obviously, their defense is the focus. Listen, it, 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 Trubisky. Uh, is the is is the poor man's Joe Flacco here? Listen, just don't screw it up. Perform when it's time, and maybe we'll go somewhere. I'm not even trying to say this I mean, is the Super Bowl mm-hmm. contender. Let's not get. I'm already right. I'm not. That, mm-hmm. I'm not even saying that. that yeah, you're not knocking the Bears. I, I'm hoping. I'm helping to explain mm-hmm. to those who are mm-hmm. to, to understand how you are, in that this is how the Bears win games. Period. I'm not even so much knocking Trubisky either. To, to be honest, he's only played what? Oh, 14, I am. Fourteen games <laughs> in the pros. There's still a lot. There's still a lot of lot of uh, the jury's still out on Trubisky. I mean, I, you see moments and you see bad moments. I mean, it, it's one of those things where okay, let's, let's give another year and then we'll, we'll assess it after year four, after year three or four. By year three, I've should, never should be seen. Your... I've never seen him throw a pass that made me just go, "That was a dime. That hasn't okay. happened. Yet. And, and fair enough. And fair so. enough. And I, I'm with you. Like I said, I'm still on the fence with Trubisky, and I think that's the problem. With the Bears. The reason, I, the reason I can't put the Bears in the Super Bowl contention is because the fact that yes. Defense travels, but yet you still have a quarterback that we're not sure if he's ready to to play big time football in January. I know Russell Wilson is. I know Drew Brees is. I I know if it's warm enough, Jared Goff is. You know, I mean, I I'll even say some degree that Prescott has shown in playoff games he can play. He didn't get the Packers. Well, let's do let's do apples to apples here. As much as I'm not necessarily a guy who thinks Baker Mayfield is 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 uh, sliced bread. What I can tell you is he has made big, big passes in big moments. Oh, yeah. Um, last week he did. And, last and week. Can you claim that? Well, you, even before last week. But, yeah, last week is a great example. Good call by you. Mm-hmm. Um, but at days in, Trubisky doesn't have anything like that. No, he does not. He does not. Um, so, the Bears, yeah, they're winning. And, you know, I want to knock him. And congrats to G.W. Gross and his Bears doing well. But that's also, that's, you know, cause a, cause a pause. Let's, let's, let's calm down. <laughs> Um, yeah, seriously. Um, speaking of teams like the Bears, you know the Cowboys. And look, Dallas won that game with Philadelphia on Sunday at Sunday evening, and it was a you know obviously a great game. Although the official the, the officials fucked that game up, man. Honestly, they made that game worse than, than it should have been. Um, but you look at the numbers in that game. You know, Dallas has the ball forty five minutes to to uh, Philly's fifteen and sixteen minutes in the game, whatever the hell it was. Um, Dallas ten of nineteen on third down, Philly one of nine. Uh, Dallas gained nearly 500 yards. Philly barely 200 yards uh, total offense. Yet it took overtime on a bounce pass to uh, to uh, Amari Cooper to win that game. Dallas is playing well. I'm with you. All that, but just like the Chicago Bears, I am cause to pause also on, on, the, on the Dallas Cowboys as well. Well, okay. Listen, first of all, we talked about how the Cowboys only really against the Saints looked really good. And, and it's hard for, to use a divisional game, especially one that's a, a somewhat of a historical rivalry, um, to really gauge a performance level. But you're telling me all these numbers for time of possession and all these other uh, stats. Listen, this is the identity of the Dallas Cowboys right now. Amari Cooper is that one receiver 
and I'm going to keep using the same analogy with the 2000 Ravens, right? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the Rock Ishmael or, or whoever it was. Or, you know, if you don't like that example, um, let's go over uh, uh, to, you know, let's say one of the Carolina years with um, where Jake Delhomme was the quarterback. You had your machine. Jake Delhomme. Jake right? Delhomme. He has to call him Jake Delhomme. Jake Delhomme. Yes, exactly. Jake, Jake Delhomme. <laughs> no. Jake Delhomme. Um, but but he, he you know this this is what this team is and the instant that they let both um well this by it, it was time to go i think we finally seen enough uh evidence here with amari cooper doing his thing that des was the problem but again nobody has accounted for properly to the correct extent how much jason witten meant to this team this guy was so good that they tr- uh, uh, tried to bring in another a number of guys to be the heir apparent, but Witten just kept on producing. Martellus Bannon, Anthony Fasano, just a couple guys who have who were brought in, and they end up losing both of them because they got sick of waiting in line for their turn. Did you hear uh, <laughs> you know? the story too last week that came out that uh, they tried bringing back again recently, as recent as, recent as like two weeks ago? I didn't hear what you tried to do. What now? No, no, no. There's a story that came out last week that Jason Garrett tried to convince uh, Witten to come back as as recent as two weeks ago. Situation, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, he tried to convince Witten to come back to the Cowboys. That's what I'm saying. Considering the situation, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I missed that part. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, mean, I agree. Not talking at all. Uh, I agree, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in that place where really, and and we were like, oh, Rumble would have done so much better. <laughs> Listen, folks, Witten is Linus. Or excuse me, Romo is Linus, and Witten is a security blanket and a Peanuts, a Peanuts comic strip. That's all I'm saying. And the only reason why I use a cartoon as a reference is because Jerry Jones and, and Jason Garrett are Peppermint Patty and Marcy. I'm just saying. Wow, that's a great analogy, man. Love, and I, and I, I'm a big Peanuts fan, too, so I love it. Um, I, mm. I put Dallas and Chicago in the same bag, though, of the wait and see. Yeah, playoff teams, yes, but are they contenders? I... I would put money on Seattle to beat both those teams in in their building, too, in fact. To be you. So. Well, and the way the way the seeding works out, uh, we're mo- I mean, my understanding is we're mo- more likely going to see two great defenses clash. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look at the standings, man. The Steelers, all of a sudden, and if they don't win that j- – and it's funny, if you forget this, if they don't pull out that last-second Jaguars win about a month ago, this is now a four-game losing streak. And and based on things, if you look at the AFC uh, play pitch right now, they're not so secure to make the playoffs anymore. Hey, look at the schedule too. Uh, more o- Moreover, schedule. that mm-hmm. that also impacts the Jags in the standings too. I mean, let, let's put that where it is as well. They they would be a team um, threatening to take care of uh, to take care of business and bounce back to get into the playoffs if it wasn't for Big Ben willing his way into the end zone at the yeah. end of that game. And I say that too because right now the Steelers seven five one. You say, "Oh, this should be it's three weeks. They'll get in the playoffs." Except that schedule gets pretty nasty immediately. You lost to Oakland this week, okay? Then you play New England, who's, who's obviously really pissed off after what happened this past week because Miami. Um, then yeah. the Saints, who are still playing for number one seed in the NFC, so the gas is still on the New Orleans side. And I'm not sure to play week uh, week seventeen. It, it might be a, a divisional game, but. Um, I think it might be the Bengals actually. I think it's week seventeen for the Steelers. Um, but my point is, oh boy. these next these next two weeks are still going to be tough. Well, I mean, to finish the season, any one of their divisional opponents uh, are are strong too. If that's indeed what's going to happen, right? So, I mean, yeah, no, that's rough outing for, the, right for the Steelers. And, and, and because those last three weeks are what what we're thinking that they are. It makes perfect sense that they would slough off to the Raiders. I was oh, right. It's, it's the Bengals. Raiders. I was right. It was, it was Bengals week 17. So I was right. Hashtag talent. Well mm-hmm. done. That's right. Um, so that's 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 the reason they're sloughing off. And what have you and I said constantly about the Steelers team? They lack discipline, and this is just another example of it. If you lack discipline, a Harbar coach team is going to stay at your heels. Let me ask you a question. Explain to me. I, I, I'm sure you watched the game on, on, on Sunday. Big Bang gets hurt. They bring in the backup quarterback, and he stays in the game. And then when the Steelers finally fall behind, they bring back Big Ben. That's a lot to me. I, this is from the optics, anyway. 
that's a lack of respect to the opponent, right? Uh, uh, actually, no, it's quite the opposite. If, if, if they start falling behind and then they bring in Ben, that means somebody has a tight sphincter and doesn't trust the backup. Or, am I wrong there? I'm, but I'm thinking if Big Ben's playing that game all the way through, he's able to play the game all the way through, or at least come back a game earlier than he did, um, maybe you win that game going away as opposed to having to worry about, you know, having to come back from behind late in the fourth quarter. That's, that's just my analysis on that. Um... That can be argued, but hey, let's put it this way: When have they ever? When when this year have they earned that respect? You know, I don't know. No, the Raiders. I know. They, look, the Raiders are still. still, still <laughs> the Raiders. <laughs> look, the Raiders. Who has put them at the in, in, in the bottom of his bottom five this week? Right? The, 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 oh, they're still gonna be there. Snug, maybe not the bottom <laughs> bottom, but still snug. The Raiders. The Raiders are still stinky poo poo. Like, come on now, let's, let's, let's not get real. John, John Gruden become a good coach all out of nowhere. Um, uh. I just think, you know, look, look Kyle, his bottom line, and I, I think even Colin Coward said it too. He, he actually this boldly said, I've been saying for weeks now, the Steelers love drama. They just love drama. I mean, I'm not prepared to go that far. Um, Coward has a bit of a of a uh, narrative on 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 the Tomlin administration he's being right, though, less. Bit. He's a little t- He's a little tight. It, Go ahead. I, I'll say this. Maybe it's time to start considering other op- options than Tomlin. If the rumors are out there, for example, that Mike Zimmer could be a surprise firing this year in Minnesota, do you or do you not think he would be a great fit in, in, in Pittsburgh? Because I sure as hell do. The chain of culture, yeah, absolutely. And, and given the fact that they just fired their office coordinator, John Filippo like an hour ago, um, yeah. Correct. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but it's gonna be the Steelers gonna be a team to watch the next two weeks because gotta play uh the Pats, gotta play uh the uh the the, the Saints. So it's not, it's not <laughs> they, they got a lot of people ahead of them. And Baltimore, I mean, they, they, they got a break on that one. Even losing to KC, they got a break here. So the division is still yeah. in play. Um, Miracle Miami, you, you covered the Dolphins, of course. How fun was that? That was pretty amazing. I, I um no, nothing. I had I had it had been that situation once again where I I was uh, in the middle of filling in numbers. I had filled in the final score in my article, and I'm I'm writing the situation. I, I was writing basically a piece for a moral victory that was turned into an actual victory. Okay, the the, the whole thing that even makes the miracle possible was balanced offense from the Miami Dolphins, and that's not something you've gotten in a lot of games. But what we've what, what what is revealed to me here, Ernest Christian, is um, without a defense, this Patriots team is not a force. I mean, listen, as much as you want to get all over, you know, Tom Brady's legacy and 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 worship at his temple like the yes. Patriots fan that you are, yes. the fact of the matter is this: <laughs> is you walked right into that too. I love it. I love it. It's um, great. The fact of the matter is this: is is you have at least one, if not more, pro bowlers on the defense that makes a Super Bowl happen. And no, I'm not counting the choke job necessarily by by that 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 group. Uh, it, well, let's put it this way: shouts to Danny Thompson and the Falcons. But um, that was, in my in my view, that was more about the, the Falcons giving that one away than it was anything else. But beyond that, that particular example of a Super Bowl win. Defense was a, a just as big, if not a bigger factor in the football game. Yeah, I, um, I, I didn't lock into the game. Except for the Panthers win. Let's be fair, that was a shootout. <laughs> I, I didn't lock into the game, though, on um, Sunday. But what I, what I did see on Red Zone, I thought Tannehill, in the moments I saw him play, and the numbers sort of sold that a little bit, too, he looked pretty good. Well, and yeah, he's even playing injured with a bad ankle. He didn't finish the first half, and then he ended up back out on the field. And 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 listen, say what you will about Tannehill and his uh, injury issues. You know, you can't t- help the club and the tub and all that. Um, he did a great job, and Kenyon Drake uh, on that last play showed once again why he's a top-level player on that Dolphins roster. He's not going to go anywhere, nor should he. Frank Gore looked like a Hall of Famer throughout the game. Um, it was nice to see Kenny Stills contributing for, in a big way uh, for over 100 yards. Balanced offense was what set this up. And frankly, the Patriots got seven points off of uh, one of two punt blocks that got in the game. 
And then the, the Miami defense did something we aren't used to seeing from them in stopping the Patriots from scoring when they got a second blocked punt towards the end of the half. Wow. You, you, the Dolphins aren't supposed to be capable of that. And Listen, those are just a number of moments in that game that could have gone either way. So to see it end on the Drake play made perfect sense. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, one quick thing. For all these Patriots goofballs who are criticizing – the Gronk positioning there. Why is Gronk on the field? First of all, Belichick has done this for years, okay? And if somebody else was back there and Canyon drank, ran through him like a like the running back he is, you all instead, you all being Patriots fans such as yourself, would all be saying, why wasn't Gronk <laughs> back there? He's usually back there. I love like, I love like a, I love like a plain of the Pats fan. And they, they, my buddy of mine, my text, they, calls me the biggest Pat hater in the world. I'm like, yeah, you talk to my buddy Kyle. You, 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 you are you, not you, the biggest. He'll, 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 yeah, and that's, that's, that's all. Talk to my buddy Kyle. He'll tell you otherwise. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's a bigger joke than me calling you a Pats fan is whoever said you were a Patriots hater. They just don't pay enough attention. No, they don't. Yeah, exactly. They don't. They really don't. <laughs> By the way, speaking of Patriots haters, I, I noticed that your Giants beat the heck out of the Bears, and we didn't mention that in our assessment, so I figured it was worth mentioning that. Anyway. We did, we did last week. A little, a little bit. We did, but, but, but again, I, I was, it's, it's part of the analysis. I, but you know, I, I was disappointed because of the fact that, uh, you know, they, they, it should have been easier than the way they did it. But whatever. But <laughs> what, what did we say at, 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 at the close of the, uh, the, close of the, the segment last week? Beggars can't be choosers. Just take what you can. That's it. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, well, right. But, I mean, this, that had a factor in how they beat the Rams, too. I think they were pissed off a bit, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sure it did. So, anyway. uh, yeah, yeah. So, so thank us, G. Thank you. <laughs> um, did Patrick Mahomes wrap up the MVP this week? That fourth and ninth throw on the run to, <laughs> to the right of the field to Tyreek Hill was as sick as you're going to see in the NFL. I, I mean, not just – the fact he got he got out of the pressure because the Ravens played phenomenal on def- defense on that team. They were showing some different looks. Casey looked uncomfortable. Mahomes looked uncomfortable, and yet he put a, 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 through that rock on a dime to Hill. I mean, I I, I think right now we were saying Drew Brees, and certainly Brees is still in the, in the conversation, but and the Andrew Luck, of course, too. But that throw. To me, that doesn't throw. I mean, he had a decent game for the most part. I mean, considering who he was facing, I, I, I'm I got from Mahomes at least back in the lead for MVP. Well, first of all, um, he's going to get the MVP because the press are a bunch of sick of fans that vote for the MVP with a stat book, like, and and that's just unacceptable. Um, I'm not prepared to think rolling to the right and making that throw to Tyree Hill is as impressive as let's say rolling right and making that throw to Doug Baldwin or any other Colts receiver not named T.Y. Hilton, okay? Um, That all being said, yeah, I I think you're right. I mean, that was a big moment. That was, you know, actually, when people say you you learn what a champion is of what they do when they're down a bit, and that Ravens team, you know, hung around a little bit. They weren't supposed – they were supposed to be beaten. You know, I would expect it a 27-13 kind of situation, yet, you know – whether it's because they don't, they don't have enough film on Lamar Jackson, this little trickeration they're doing by putting in two quarterbacks at once with him and RG3. Yeah. Um, very, you know, that's a tough thing to account for. Um, that, that sort of thing. Uh, but at day's end, I'm, I, I, this, them be winning this game and holding on tight, even though the Ravens uh, were saying never more, uh, you know, I, like I, I, I got to appreciate it. That was good. I like that. Hashtag talent. That was good. That was good. That was good. No, I, I got to put Mahomes ahead in, in the race now. I mean, that's just, that, you know, talking about moments. And, I mean, I'm sorry. I, wait a minute. You're putting Mahomes ahead even though you got our dude, Andrew Luck, segue alert, coming in and, and, and ceasing the, the win streak of the Texans? I, think, I can't sign up. No, I, no, the reason why is – no, Luck's in the conversation. He's top three. I mean, that's not even the conversation. You know, I'm, I'm not even going there. I'm, I'm just saying that – that's great. Any you know, third behind. Where, where I'm luck. impressed I'm by Mahomes. Mahomes is still a young court. Mahomes. This is this is technically Mahomes' rookie year. Technically, he had one start last year. Um, and you know, I expect the Baltimore to play with pride and, and punch in the mouth, and he got punched in the mouth, but he still overcame that. Look at Jared Goff in a cold yeah. on on Sunday night. Got punched in the mouth. Well, and hey, never I got mean, up. When you when you have the best, when you have arguably the best tight end in the league on your team, uh, a number of great weapons, excellent protection. 
I mean, you know, that's what happens. I, 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 he, he, he has weapons. I, I got that. Uh, I'm just saying, I, I, I was impressed how he bounced back. Like, of course, like him, like, you know, it, it, it comes so easy some of the first couple of weeks, and then they, as the season goes on, they start to fall, fall apart when they get challenged, and he stepped up the challenge. And they give him credit for that. That's all. Well, I'll put it this way, then. If if, if Nick Mahone, or if, if Patrick, I said Nick, that's funny. If Nick's Patrick fine. Mahone, win, yeah, right, wins, wins the MVP, then anybody else other than Andy Reid winning the coach of, year, of the year is unacceptable from the press. Period. Well, he's stuffing the conversation too, Andy Reid. I mean, you got obviously you have Nagy. I I I'll tell you what. If, if they make the playoffs, Frank Reich's gonna be in that conversation. Um, and then uh, you know, you say Andy Reid. So, all right, let's get to the playoff locks. Every week we do this. Uh, turn in the year teams that you know the playoff picture to start today and all that. Um, uh, we every week we lock in teams we feel like are a lock. Uh, for the uh, playoff spots in each conference. So, obviously, in AFC first, one seed is still the Kansas City Chiefs, two seed and Patriots. Uh, the three seed is the Texans. The four seed is still currently the Steelers. The five seed currently is the L.A. Chargers, which huge game against the, the Chiefs on Thursday night. And, of course, the six seed is currently the Baltimore Ravens. They were able to, uh, despite the loss, keep their, keep their spot. Um uh, I already said the, the first five teams I mentioned locks. Um, for now, Pittsburgh is getting a little little weird now, though, with that schedule. Absolutely. I am almost ready to unlock them, but I think they'll find a way. They are just too talented, dude. They're just too talented. The well, they play up and down to their competition. This is not new, right? So I'm not going to unlock them just yet. I'm gonna, I'm going to stick to my the Steelers, even though I, I probably should unlock them because of that schedule and then the team surging on the bottom. But I won't do it just yet, right? I'll keep Pittsburgh as a lock. So, uh, where you at in the AFC? You know, in the AFC, uh, it all really depends on what the, how the how the Ravens finish. And granted, their their concluding schedule doesn't look all that easy, right? They they had a tough game, obviously, this past week against the Chiefs, and they got another one coming up. I forget against whom. I'm saying I'm well, thinking the I'll Chargers right now, could they, be wrong. They, they got Tampa this week. They go to uh-huh. the Chargers. Um, week sixteen, you're correct. It was the Chargers, yeah, and then the the new uh, the uh, Browns um, on to close out the year, and that's that's gonna be a tough game too. So two out of the three of those are tough. Okay, my, and, and you can argue the Bucks too. Be tough a little bit too. You can argue the Bucks. You can argue it. Yeah, I won't. But uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, uh, talent wise, you know, it's big things interesting sometimes. Listen, when you got a quarterback who lacks discipline, uh, John Harbaugh. Uh, may not be the defensive coordinator, but it is his team, and discipline will crush Jameis Winston every time. That's a mm-hmm. fact. Um, that being said, uh, if I, I'll say this: if the Ravens beat the Chargers, I am prepared. Well, depending, I mean, granted, if they find a way to lose against the Bucks, that's moot. But if they beat the Chargers, I would at that time be prepared to give them the lock because. The, the other, the other, there's still plenty of opportunities for other teams to make it. Let's not get crazy. And the AFC conference uh, record as a tie break will be a factor. Um, and it's going to get to be a real cluster at the end. Well, right now, in the hunt. If right the now. Colts. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Well, right now. If the Colts do their thing, they'll be the second highest team um, on the strength of a tie break with the Dolphins. The Dolphins have a tie break on the Titans from week one. So for anybody who tries to tell me the, uh, the, the regular season doesn't matter, just wait. Guess what? You just got educated. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, there's four, seven, and six teams in the AFC that are still fighting. And if the Baltimore Ravens win against the Chargers, and assuming they get past the Bucks, which I already have, um, I think they're going to hold strong and get that six seat, but I'm not going to be. I'm not prepared to declare a lock until week six. No, I'm not touching it now. Miami goes to Minnesota, I believe, this week. Indy, that's correct. Uh, uh, that's I should say you're going to be there. Um, Tennessee yep. plays my boys, the Giants. Not an easy game for them either because the Giants are playing much better football the last couple of weeks. Um, right. So you got yeah, you got those Ravens seven and six, and then the three teams in between, three seven six teams in between. Don't count out the Broncos just yet, 6-7. Although, that's a bad loss to San Francisco, though. And we're talking about easy, easy wins going forward. Well, one of the easy wins end up being a loss. <laughs> you know, they miss yeah, playoffs, you know why. Yeah. That's a bad I mean, loss. let's put it this way. Had they won that game, we have the potential. 
for five teams at seven and six, that would have been a heck of a drama to watch. We still got plenty with four of them, though. And, and, and you know, I know it's a cliche, but the playoffs have started already for uh, these four teams. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, so we will lock the, obviously the same, the same, you know, Steelers so locked for now? Um, I mean, I hate unlocking because it means I'm admitting defeat, but I still have to see they're going to lose to the Patriots. There's no middle ground there. I'm just not prepared to sign off unless this defensive front completely annihilates what's in front of them, which obviously I can't rule out. Um, I, I, the Steelers aren't going to win. Um, and I'm going to be curious to see on what they do in that Saints game. Um, week 16 could, could see, uh, could see us admitting defeat and unlocking the Steelers. We'll shall see NFC one seed back to number one, New Orleans Saints. Uh, the two seed is the Rams. The three seed currently is the Chicago Bears. The four seed, the Dallas Cowboys. The five seed, the Seattle Seahawks. And the six seed, despite the loss last night, the Minnesota Vikings. I am going to keep, obviously, the locks for me, the Rams and the Saints, obviously, that's going to remain. I locked the Bears a couple weeks ago. I have officially locked the Cowboys today. They went in the East. No questions asked. And as promised last week, I am locking the Seattle Seahawks as a playoff team. So you've locked all six teams? No, five teams. I, I, I leave, I leave uh, Minnesota as a lockdown. Oh, so you're admitting defeat on the Vikings. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what. Didn't I lock them last week? And I cut, I, 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 wait, I did lock Wait, I did lock them last week, right? I kept them locked last you, week. You, 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 lo- you locked them two weeks ago, and you thought about unlocking it, but you didn't. Okay. My trepidation of 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 not of unlocking them right now is because the teams behind them, Philly, fading, Washington, done, the Giants too far back, the Packers probably too far back as well. Although they're only about a half game behind uh, one actually one game behind the wild card, so the Packers still in this thing. Um, Lions too far back, the Panthers are fading. Uh, so that's my that's my. Uh, I mean, Minnesota's, of all these teams here I just mentioned, Minnesota's the best team of the bunch. Correct. And, and I want to keep... facing against a team that'll be mentally drained in the Dolphins that just pulled off our, that we could arguably be, or at least perceived as, the biggest upset of the entire season. I, I want... You fire your offensive coordinator this week? I, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to keep them locked for now because I still think they're the better team of, of the bunch. They got Miami this week. <laughs> you know, no, no, seriously, they got Miami this week. Let me try to schedule real quick. Uh, you got Miami this week. Pop up, pop. Oh. And I mean, we've already we've already declared the Bears a lock, which I mean, yeah. we're basically locking the AFC North uh, as contributing two teams into the playoffs. Okay, well, here's the thing: you have Dolphins this week at home at Detroit, where you should win. Divisional game, yes, you should win still. And then the Bears week 17, but the Bears might already be locked for the three seed by then. Correct. So hypothetically, uh, well, you should go I'll put three. it this way. Yeah. They control their own destiny, uh, theoretically. Well, of um, if, if, that, if, if, if they get to the moment where they cease to control their own destiny, I myself will lose belief in them. Because if I'm the Bears and if I, I have the opportunity to eliminate them, I step on their throats and do it. Yeah. I'm going to keep them locked for now because I, I still think they're the better team of the bunch. Keep on Green Bay, though, because Aaron Rodgers, I mean, the only game behind the wild card. And I'll put it this way. If you if you have that situation where you're, you're facing uh, the, the Vikings in Week 17, you crush the Vikings, knock them out of contention, and face off against Aaron Rodgers, who has been awful in the playoffs of late. Yeah. Yeah, Packers have to go. The problem with the Packers they have to go to Chicago this week, <laughs> and then the Jets should be win, and then the Lions. So if the Packers can get by Chicago on the road, which uh, I don't know, um, then I I I, I could if the pa- I, I tell you what, if the Packers win this week in in Chicago, I'll start talking about playoffs to the Packers because they, they'll beat the Jets on the road and they'll probably beat Detroit at home. Fair enough. Nonetheless, a given. Well, I mean, yeah, that's 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 fair enough. Of course, I wouldn't make Detroit a given, but anyways, eh, Detroit's always hot, hot and cold. You no, know, Patricia, you know. So your locks are what and following. You have the locked Rams Saints, obviously, but 
You also lock the Dallas locking up uh, Chicago also? I am not prepared to lock up the, that number six spot, um, as, as, as you put it. The list, or I guess technically it's the number four because we're talking about the division win. Um, I don't know that they clinched it yet, but the Cowboys still are the Cowboys. And the problem is um, they looked more like the Cowboys than that team that beat the Saints. It's you over. know, the ones with the stars on their helmets it's that over. weren't the Cowboys. But It's over. One you know. win or an eagle loss at any point, it's over. They win the East. They have a tiebreaker. Because they beat them twice, they're eight and five. Eagles six and seven. Three games to go. The math doesn't work out. They and they need the entire overhaul to happen. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, you're probably right. Sorry, Eagles fans. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess they are locked, which means then all six. Well, even Stan, I, I I haven't locked the Seahawks yet. Why haven't you? <laughs> <done that? What's laughs> That's right. It was four teams. I, ha- I it was only four spots I had locked um, in the NFC. And yeah, so I guess we'll go ahead and lock. The Cowboys, then. Um, C- Seattle? Huh? I'm I, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I, um, I'm surprised because if, if you look at this, everything because everything's playing out here, Seattle is the most stable of the wild card teams by far. Yeah, that's true. If you go, yeah, you know what? I'm going to say all six C's are locked. I'm there. In fact, I, I think Seattle can actually clinch next week if they win with some losses here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna call all six teams for now, and then I might have to admit defeat with the Vikings because I called them two weeks ago. So we're on the same page, then. You're not on the same page, then. Yep. All right, cool. All right, this week's show again. Kyle, thank you as always. Um, I think maybe next week or week after that we'll do a roundtable with uh, you, me, me, you and G. Maybe we'll see. I mean, I'm down with that if he can handle the fact that you know his team isn't going to go any further than the second round of the playoffs. I'm thinking maybe we should do that during the playoffs. We should do that uh, round table. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll figure that out. We'll figure that out. I don't know. Anyway, plug, plug, plug. By the way, looking forward to having you on dinner time very soon. Yes. Uh, with me and my dude, Tokyo Jameson. Uh, check that out. Did you uh, hear the dropped, podcast we uh, did? Uh, I started it. I didn't finish it. Um Considering the fact that he was actually staying in my house while I was, uh, 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 not while I was listening to it, but like I was in the car picking some, coming home from somewhere, I eventually went and saw him later that day. And some of the stuff he talked about, I'm like, I just gave him a big hug because I didn't know about it yet. Mm-hmm. But, um, but um, yeah, definitely one I have to finish. And, of course, moving stuff, no shocks all the way around. Um, you know, let's just say listening to, to, to Tokyo J was way more uh, uh, compelling and, and less laugh-inducing than listening to, listening to you and Zach, but I digress. Uh, I mean, what? But That's tomorrow's show. <laughs> <laughs> Our picks. Our picks. Um, but, yeah, no, looking forward to uh, getting you on, on, on dinner time. Finally, should be a fantastic uh, episode all the way around. Um, we'll work on a, a, whatever that topic is going to be. Of course, you have Default Assault coming out. Look out very soon. We're going to have the compelling debate as to whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It is. Um, um, well, they say there are two types of people in the world. In the world, uh, uh, Those who are smart enough to believe Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie and those who are wrong. And you, in fact, are wrong. So then um, there's the concept of... That, that, that's, so, that, that's so original, Kyle. You t- tell me I'm wrong. That's so original. Well, yeah, this is, it's not original. Listen, don't be original and get correct, and then I'll adjust my approach. Moving on. So, <laughs> you didn't say it. I did really just say it. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, and then of course, I will be covering a number of bowl games here. Uh, should our credentials all pass through, uh, I'm slated to cover the Cure Bowl this weekend for Blue HQ Media. So check out the battle, the Bayou that uh, that will ensue. Uh, to raise money for breast cancer in Tulane and the University of Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Just, you gotta love that mascot in and of itself. <laughs> and then, of course, my coverage of the Miami Dolphins with the Dolphins Wire of USA Today. Um, fun times, man. I mean, I know it's Florida and it's not supposed to be cold, but stay as warm as you can. Uh, and until next time, brother, class dismissed. <laughs> We'll be right